What is going on, New York Giant fans? Welcome back to another Roster Bubble Series video. Please hit the like button, comment, and subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you know when a live stream pops or drops. Appreciate y'all coming back. Also, share this out. It is a dead time in the NFL offseason despite training camp being a few weeks away. So sharing this out, getting it out to your dog, cat, sister, brother, whatever. Getting more people to this video, video series, and channel overall does a lot. So appreciate it. As always, as we continue to grow this channel. So another Roster Bubble series video. How I do these videos is I take a player that's on the Roster Bubble. I go into their background. I go into their competition, how they could win a spot on the roster, how they could lose a spot on the roster. And then at the end, I predict whether they'll make the roster or not. It's about five to ten minutes long. Usually, sometimes it could take just a tad longer. So today's profile is a familiar one to New York Giant fans, Matt Pert. He was drafted out of UConn by the New York Giants back in 2020. Started one game for the team, played in 11, got more playing time as the season went down. I think he got his first snaps in either week five or week six or week seven. Week six it was, I remember, because Andrew Thomas was benched because he showed up to a meeting late. So he was benched for the first quarter, and Matt Parrott started at left tackle, which we all we all can sit back and laugh at that now, knowing Thomas is one of the best left tackles in the league, and Joe Judge is back on the Patriots. But anyway, I digress. Uh, Parrott, as I said, he uh, you know played in 11 games, rotated with Cam Fleming at the right tackle position, he played 22% of the offensive snaps in those 11 games, 6% on special teams. But then it goes, it goes into the 2021 season where a lot of us are anticipating, look, he's going to be the starting right tackle. Hopefully he beats Nate Solder out of camp. Now, a lot of people were saying, okay, Nate Solder looks good. Parrot is iffy, whatever. So out of camp, out of preseason games in September, Nate Solder is declared the starting right tackle. Now, there was a bit of a rotation at first, then it dropped. Then when Andrew Thomas got injured, Matt Parrott switched over to the left tackle, Nate Solder stayed at right tackle. Then when Thomas came back, Parrott was removed from the left tackle position, rotating at right tackle on occasion. Um, he played in 15 games, so he missed two games and uh, also started five of those games. 43% of the offensive snaps in a total of... 15 games as mentioned and then 11 percent on special teams last year i predicted him to be cut if i'm not mistaken because there were a couple of guys that were stacking up behind him that looked like better candidates he played in nine games last year 19 percent of the offensive snaps 14 percent on special teams now to go to the stats wise career seven sacks given up two in his rookie year four in um his second year, which was where he got the most playing time, and then won last year. I believe it was against either the Lions or the Eagles, because I remember he was playing left tackle, and the rusher got by him and then forced a fumble on Tyrod Taylor, and then I think Tyrod threw a touchdown. So I want to say it was against the Eagles. Um, against, my, like, I, I think his name was Patrick Johnson, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, 31 pressures over the course of three years and five penalties. Uh, one in his rookie year, two each the last two years. What does his competition look like? I would say it's a little bit more advanced than last year. Tyree Phillips, who's played a ton of games over the course of his career as a backup, offensive guard, offensive tackle, he's versatile in that area. Devery Hamilton, who was really impressive last year in training camp and in the preseason. But uh, with that being said, you know he's on the roster bubble. Maybe we'll do a video on him. Corey Cunningham, who was cut by the Patriots, originally started out as a Cardinal, was moving around the league a little bit. The Giants had him in 21. They also had him in 22 as well in some occasions. And then uh, Marcus McKeithen. McKeithen's probably going to make the roster, or he might go on PUP. Probably going to make the roster, but again, competing for a backup tackle role, McKeithen can play both guard and tackle. So how can he win? Versatility. I mean, also staying healthy as well. We're going to get to that in just a second, but versatility um, is a big one. It is a big one because uh, there's been talks the last few years of Matt Parrott. Oh, can he play guard? Can he play tackle? Well, 
there's a lot of different guys on this roster that can do both. And we haven't necessarily seen Parrot play guard in game snaps yet. Tyree Phillips has. Devery Hamilton has. Cunningham is close to it. McKeithen, we know, can play both from college. Can Parrot do it? We'll see. But versatility would be a way that he try to make the roster. That would make uh, that would make his uh, case a little bit better. To say, stay healthy. He tore his ACL. Uh, let's see, what was it? 2021 against the Eagles, the second game, and he took a little while to rehab from it. Slower than some of the other guys coming off ACL injuries, and got activated off PUP. Got some playing time, of course, down the line, but. He wasn't really the backup tackle. It was Tyree Phillips. And then improve as a pass blocker. From what we've been seeing on the game tape from Matt Parrott, it's been the same issue. Um, just the lack of punch from him. And speedier rushers always get by him. Hence the forced fumble he gave up against the Raiders two years ago. And also the fumble he gave up where uh, the sack he gave up where uh, Tyrod Taylor fumbled it. So there's that. How can he lose? Injury? If he gets injured somehow, I think he's completely done. Um, I think the odds are already against him, but injury, he's completely done. Blown up against speed rushers, he's going to be going against the twos and threes, so it's not the ones. He's not competing for a left tackle or right tackle spot, unless there's an injury that happens. Hopefully not. Um, minimal improvements in his game to boast above competition. I mean, I was a Matt Parrott stan in 2021. I wanted him to play over Nate Solder, but... It didn't prove to me much of anything because last year he didn't play too many games and Nate Solder was already done with the New York Giants by then and all that sort of stuff. But if he doesn't boast his game against twos and threes, if he doesn't improve as a pass blocker, I could see him getting cut. Unfortunately, though, I do see him getting cut. I think I saw him getting cut last year as my prediction. But Tyree Phillips, I mean, he's a guy that has experience already. I thought he played solid with the Giants last year when in those games that Evan Neal was hurt. Devery Hamilton, he's got versatility. I don't know that he does make the roster. I don't know, you know, what the case is there. We'll do a video on it. But um, he definitely has a little bit more of an up over Pert because Hamilton, uh, you know, obviously came in last year. Parrot is also Gettleman's guy and Judge's guy, so it's not going to be cut and dry. Corey Cunningham, I think he's got more experience than Parrot. And uh, McKeithen, obviously they drafted McKeithen. They didn't draft Parrot, so... Uh, I think Matt Parrott is cut, and he'll probably go to another team. I don't think the Giants will keep him on the practice squad. Like, comment, subscribe. Do all the good stuff. Turn on post notifications so you know when the live stream pops, video drops. Appreciate y'all coming back. One of these till the middle of training camp every single day. Peace out, guys. See you later. Stay cool.